male victim was laying in between the area of 18, 19, and 20. I'd gotten in that morning, had a cup of coffee in my hand, and my cell phone rang. And first words he said was, dude, we've got a crazy one. And it was on. OK, so uh, I guess any questions you guys have, just uh, fire away. Matt Murphy was the senior deputy district attorney in the Orange County District Attorney's Office. He's a fighter, and he's a winner. And he's very good at his job. At the point that I got the phone call on this case, I'd done over 100 jury trials. I hadn't lost one since 1996. I've never had a case that has had more wild twists and turns than this one. The location inside the orange arrows was wet with bleach. This was a pretty big case, and I think for the prosecutors in Orange County, there was a lot of pressure to solve it. Two victims were taken from this home. Police say on October 2nd, a kidnapper broke in. He blindfolded the victims, a man and a woman, and forced them into a vehicle. Usually when you have a crime of this magnitude, there's at least somewhere to start. There's at least a suspect or suspects. The victims did not have much to say to the Newport Beach PD. They didn't know who would do this and why. I think we slept six hours and four days. We were so busy because we didn't have any answers. We didn't have any direction. It was heinous crime, no clues. So law enforcement begins canvassing the neighborhood in Newport Beach. Canvases are notoriously unfruitful. It's a cold search for witnesses. The question is, did you see or hear anything unusual? So it turns out the day prior to our kidnapping, a witness had seen something suspicious. A white pickup truck had parked behind Michael's house. And this is where the neighbor comes into play. And really, this is the big break. So a woman was looking out her window and saw three guys that looked like they were workmen because they were in construction gear. But she noticed that they looked very suspicious. So the officer's like hoping against hope that maybe she can describe the vehicle. And her answer is something to the effect of, well, would the license plate work? She takes down the license plate number. This turns out to be Eureka. The truck is registered to a man by the name of Kyle Handley. So of course, they go right back to Michael and say, do you know Kyle? Michael's like, yeah, I know who Kyle is, but how would he be tied to this? This is a young man who lives in the area, who happens to be in the marijuana business. Michael says Kyle enters his dispensary and starts selling him weed. And Michael and Kyle start a friendship. Aside from their business relationship, Michael thought he was a pretty cool guy and thought he might be fun to hang with. And he did. He actually invited Kyle on a Las Vegas wild weekend, and they had a blast. It's kind of a celebration. This is a very successful business that Michael is running. He's celebrating a good year. They stay in a suite. They're gambling, having a good time. And Michael's kind of bankrolling the trip. And Hamley's just kind of along for the ride. Those personal and professional connections, plus the license plate, are more than enough to raise suspicion on Kyle Handley. So the police get a warrant for Handley, and they go to his house, and he's not there. And we start videotaping and photographing every little thing. Stand by. Stand by. They get into the house, and clearly it's what's called a grow house, all right? There's almost no furniture in the place, and the reason there's no furniture is they need room for marijuana plants. They open up the laundry room, and there is a plastic container with zip ties that look exactly the same as the ones that were used on our victims. And we're starting to get excited. We're starting to think, okay, Kyle Hanley's definitely potentially associated with this. And then we go into the backyard. And in the backyard, his trash bags, these big black trash bags, and then a green bag. And inside it, we find a cut zip tie. We find white towels with covered in bleach. Michael, when he's found in the desert, he's covered in bleach. His clothes are covered in bleach. 
Once police have searched the house, their eyes are set on a truck that's parked in the driveway. It's the truck that they traced Kyle's registration to. They see the same license plate number, so they know that she wrote it down, right? And the first thing the officers notice when they open up the back of the truck is the overwhelming smell of bleach. So after finding all of this evidence, we call Matt Murphy and ask him, can we charge Kyle Hanley with this crime? And he says, yes. And from there, we charge Kyle Hanley with kidnapping, aggravated assault, and mayhem. October 6th, Hanley's arrested. It's exciting, but it's only the beginning. We know he has associates. We know there's other suspects. So now the detectives focus on that vehicle. They want to know if it was actually used in the crime itself and if there's any DNA inside the vehicle that might lead them to any other suspects. And this is where the blue gloves entered the story. Inside that truck was a pair of blue gloves. Two blue nitrile gloves. Nitrile gloves are rubber gloves. And we later submitted one of those to the lab. They run a DNA test on it and they get a hit. There's a person that matches the DNA that was in that glove. And it wasn't Kyle Hanley. And it wasn't our victims. And a name comes back. Hossein Nayeri. Hossein Nayeri. Hossein Nayeri. At this point, nobody knows who Hussein Nayeri is. I've never heard of the name before. I know nothing about him. Now, the plot thickens. Cops immediately go to Michael and say, who is Hossein Nayeri? The answer, I have no clue. Take a seat. This is the only network interview of Hussein Nayeri. What would you want people to know about you? I'm just an average, ordinary person. Simple as that. What was a latex glove with your DNA doing? Oh, the in famous, this car? the famous latex glove. We'll get to it when the time comes. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.